Uh, when I look back on my research, or I, when I talk about my research, I often say I do life course research, or I, I frame it within a life course perspective. And then when I look back on my career, I realize it's not a choice I ever deliberately made, I kind of just drifted into doing life course research. And that was a long time ago, so let me tell you a bit about that. As a graduate student, I was trained in a quantitative paradigm, much like Monica, at the core of this hypothesis testing approach was the insistence that if you want to argue that there's a causal connection, causal, recognizing the dilemmas with that word, between two variables, there's three things you need to look at. First of all, is there a correlation, a relationship between the two? Second, temporal ordering really matters. Your X really should precede the Y if you want to say one has an effect on the other. And third, can you discount any spurious or alternative relationships? And if you can't, well then, you start over. So this em emphasis on temporal ordering, time, really shaped my first major research project and has shaped my career ever since in the kinds of research I do. Back in the 1980s, youth unemployment was extremely high in this country. It had not been that high since the Depression. And a lot of people, myself, politicians, lots of academics were worried about what would happen to what was often called the lost generation, this young generation of people who were having trouble finding work. Unlike their parents, the baby boomers had done very well. Previous research has had shown that unemployment can lead to depression, it can lead to lower self-esteem, and to other personal and social problems. And previous research in criminology had also shown that unemployment can lead to crime. But at the same time, there's always an alternative chicken and egg argument. Perhaps people who are depressed or have lower self-esteem have more trouble finding work. Or perhaps people with a deviant background have more trouble finding work. So we, a couple of colleagues and I devised what we thought would be the right way to test this, a longitudinal study. We thought we would survey high school graduates and track them for two years and then we would know the answer. So in 1985, along with a other people we surveyed, about a thousand Edmonton grade 12 students, and resurveyed them in 1986. And then again in 1987, one of the first things we learned after two years is that when unemployment is high, young people stay in school. And so we weren't getting anywhere. So we resurveyed them in 1989 when they were 22 years old, and in 1992 when they were 25. And by that time, we were starting to learn a few things about youth unemployment, about young people growing up, about schoolwork transitions, slowly dawning, us that we, dawning on us that we were doing life course research. We began to see more clearly by then how early adolescent and even childhood experiences can shape subsequent life events. We learned, began to see how pivotal roles and experiences early in life can shape the trajectories you have after that point. Uh, along with personal decisions people make. And equally important, we began to realize that individual development and change takes place within a particular historical, social, and political context. In a sense, we were beginning to understand what C. Wright Mills talked about when he said sociologists should work at the intersection of biography, history, and social structure. So I tell this story as if I came upon these insights independently. <laughs> and as if I can really remember exactly how that happened. Neither are really quite true. And we can talk about memory and data later on this, this afternoon. I need to at the same time acknowledge that we were encountering very interesting life course research from people in the US, Jalen Mortimer, Minnesota, people in Germany, Walter Heinz and Helga Kruger, and people in the UK. So we re didn't really stumble on these ideas ourselves. Wrapping up the life story, in 1999, I conducted another survey of the same people when they were 32 years old. And then I teamed up with my colleague and friend, Nancy Galambos from Psychology, who had been doing very similar work from a psychological perspective. And she saw some unique opportunities in the data set that I had never seen. And furthermore, convinced me we should go back one more time, 25 years after we started. So we did that survey in 2010. The two of us baby boomers teamed up with a millennial, Matt Johnson from uh, Human Ecology, who can't be here today. And he's talked us into going one more time. So as of today, we have surveyed almost 400 of the original participants when they, in the year they're turning 50. So the moral of the story, 
life course research the way we do it takes a lot of time.